Welcome to Screen Talk. I'm Eric Cohn. And Thompson here. And we have a different approach to the episode this week because we have a great guest in Jonathan Majors. And we hope you enjoy that conversation. We really enjoyed doing it. Before we get into it, though. time. So it's actually, we dug into a lot of things. We're, We're not just doing the standard issue promo you know, all the movies he has coming out. It, it, we, we got into some good uh, industry stuff too. Yeah. I would say if you're, if you're looking for a deep dive on the post credits of Ant-Man, you're, you're not going to get it here, unfortunately, but yes, we're excited about that conversation. And we're also excited about the end of Oscar season being right around the corner. And we promised some updates about uh, PGA and uh, uh, SAG because I'm trying to keep them all straight here because these two we knew would tell us exactly uh, who oh, has really momentum. straightened out the picture. <laughs> it's clarified the picture a bit in the sense that everything everywhere all at once continues to be on the roll after a little setback at the BAFTAs, uh, you know, as I predicted and you predicted, you know, they did very well at the SAG Awards winning um, the big ensemble and three acting prizes. And which means that they they made they won four prizes for the first time of any movie ever. Yeah, and, and it included awards. it included a surprise of sorts, even with supporting Jamie actress. Lee Curtis. So that yeah. I mean, I would literally I was watching that at home on the live stream, and I was like, "Whoa!" I mean, it was really like that seemed like it was sort of a uh, you know we'd been assuming shows, for a long time. She's a really great. I did an interview with her, which will run next week, and and she's a great campaigner and she's a pro she's one of those people who grew up in the industry she her parents were huge movie stars as she mentioned in her acceptance speech janet lee and and tony curtis and and who brought themselves up from nothing that kind of thing and they hated each other by the way she said yeah Yeah, but i mean but still angela bassett so good but come on i mean this seems foregone the thing about so the people. thing about the uh, SAG Awards, this is not a group that's ignoring people of color at all. They they have rewarded hidden figures. They've rewarded Black Panther. So the fact that they didn't reward Angela Bassett cannot be uh, an issue there. Uh, it it simply that Jamie Lee Curtis got more votes. Well, and it also indicates that there could be an even greater everything everywhere sweep around the corner than than you know conservative estimates it's a song. the actors are definitely we knew that behind it and michelle yo winning as well which i expected um and he could despite all the kate stuff despite yeah. all the kate stuff i mean you have noted in the past kate has been winning a lot of stuff kate so. could still go on to win the oscar that is what she in the stats Will do. You see, they both won at the Globes. So that sort of cancels each other out because they were in different categories. Doesn't count. Uh, just like Austin Butler and Colin Farrell cancel. And those aren't Oscar out. voters, but They're these not. are Oscar voters. Yeah. So now we have the BAFTAs are more Oscar voters than the SAG. The SAG awards tell you where the support in the acting branch comes from, but they're a more mainstream group than the acting branch. So the acting branch could go for Carrie Condon. The act who won the BAFTA, and they could go for for Kate Blanchett who won the BAFTA. Well, it, it definitely and it's the like one of those things where it's both, like you know, there's a there's a path for 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 each of these. And as we're well, recording, a, just a, a few lot days of left. Support for Michelle Yeoh, of course. Voting opens and closes all on the, the span March of a few 7th. days. Yeah, yeah so, so it's so right March around the corner. To March seventh. So the other the other thing was the PGA. Which did yep. go to everything, everywhere, all at once. There was right. some speculation that Top Gun could win that. I never thought it would, but uh, everything. But it is a really fascinating good. kind of divide this means right that there. It's going to win Those Best two. Picture. Yeah. Yeah. It, it feels happen. like it's sort of it's done. And I have to tell you, I mean, it, it can be really boring sometimes when it's so obvious and you want some surprises. I feel like there are enough potential surprises in categories that are a little tough to call, whether it's documentary or whatever. Match up with acting. Acting, for example. Exactly. Yeah. So like yeah. I personally am cool with this very unorthodox Best Picture contender being sort of a done deal. If it if it loses, it would be so it's such a crazy shock. And it would, it's really hard to imagine what would beat it at this point. I agree. But I think it's great that it's it's doing so well. It's so unusual to see a film like this on so many levels. It's a comedy. It's it's very young. It's trying things that are different. And even the people who don't get it, I feel like they have to like wrestle with it and try to get it. And, and I've, I've been enjoying I've, that. I've <laughs> talked to a lot of voters who are struggling and trying. They're trying to open their eyes. But here's the other thing. Um, in the LA Times, I'm a, I'm a, a member of this group of uh, Oscar prognosticators uh, uh, called Gold. What's it called? The 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 envelope, I think, or, or the buzz meter, or whatever they're calling it. 
we all picked Colin Farrell for best actor. Every Yikes. single one of us. I think there's six of us. And we're wrong. This is the like limits it. of the print edition because it yeah. went to press before the SAG Awards. And Brendan and Fraser has got that momentum going. So well, so the we'll best see. actor race is a three-way race, and I'm still calling it for Austin Butler. Well, he certainly looked emotional in the close-ups on the sags, but that Brendan Fraser win gave me pause. And as a reminder, that movie has been successful. They've told a very good narrative in public. There's a narrative, but he isn't up. The the movie itself, The Whale, isn't up for Best Picture. And that statistically That's is the not one weak good. point. That's the one weak point. So yeah. the one other thing also, around here's the, the thing. I think the two of them are sort of dueling actors in terms of d degree of difficulty, which is again, bad for Colin Farrell because Colin Farrell just has to act. You know, he doesn't have, he doesn't have to become Elvis Presley or wear a fat suit um, and, and, and be an obese man. He, in this case, it's, it's sort of the, the dueling. Um, is it the young upstart who really, subsumed his own personality to be taken over by Elvis, the, the kind of incredible work that he put in, or is it, and, and does he have a future ahead of him that would mean that they would give it to the other one who is overdue, who may never get another chance. And also, come on, he's better. I mean, like Elvis is not a, it's, it's good a movie. I think there's an argument that Colin Farrell is. You're saying Brandon Fraser is a better performance objectively than Austin Butler as Elvis Presley. No, I was talking about Colin Farrell, but uh, I don't know. I would say The Whale in some ways is a more cohesive movie than Elvis. I mean, it, this is a whole long slippery path, but I am not team Elvis and I've said so many times over. So I'm, I'm sorry to say that I can't be rooting for that one, but I, whatever it is, is wrong with race. the movie, I don't think you can fault the performance in any way. And he sings. So there's a degree of difficulty there as well. Okay, I wasn't as blown away. It was but an iconic uh, personality. To I, I I recognize the commitment. I recognize the commitment. That's but, honestly, if Austin Butler wins, that's what it is that he's winning for. Is yeah, the commitment. It's the commitment. He certainly has done that. So so we have one more thing to touch on that's around the corner, and that's the Independent Spirit Awards. This time happening one week in advance. Not a whole lot to dig into here. Obviously, again, different voting body. It's happening really close There's to some the Oscars. overlap. There is some overlap, and and they a lot of the spirit winners tend to become the Oscar winners, and they actually have a chance. Um, when is this? When is the seventh? Yeah, they're still they have. There's a few days of they have a few after. days that they could influence. So if the if they're if the yeah. best picture race was like really close and something else, you know, it, it, maybe you little, could. Do, but you a see, little movement possible on the needle, but 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 everything, everything everywhere, everywhere is going to do win. very well. There. It, that yeah. that movie would have won Spirit Awards even if it wasn't front and runner. It's a different for best list picture. of indie uh, of of international films, and uh, some the docs could have an influence if there's a big Navalny has been doing very well, as I have predicted. Yeah, I mean, I, I will say it, at the when a movie does, like that wins, you get a good speech because it's newsy. And if Navalny wins again, maybe that does help seal the deal. But again, weird race. A lot, a lot of I have heard differing opinions about those. And then you also got to touch on Andrea Riseborough, which I think when we were looking at this beforehand. You pointed yeah, out no, she's on that list. She was and nominated. She legitimately was nominated. Yeah. To before ABC anyone was really like, what is this movie? Got or, into a, a, a campaign. <laughs> Something could happen there, too. Well, yeah. to be continued next week, I guess we'll have to make some serious predictions here. I hope you're not losing too much sleep. But no. uh, we'll get there. No, In the meantime, I'm, I hope uh, folks... Honestly, uh, I'm a bit bored at this stage. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of which, let's get into the Jonathan Majors that interview. Was <laughs> that fun. was fun. It was okay. fun. So All enjoy, right. and I'll okay. see you next week. See you later. Dan, who do we have joining us? We have none other than Jonathan Majors. And what we are not doing is asking this extraordinary actor to promote his latest trifecta of films, you know, Creed 3, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, and the Sundance breakout that Searchlight picked up, Magazine Dreams. We've seen all these films. We admire his performances, but we're going to talk about lots and lots of other things. 
That's right. And um, Jonathan, you and I had a nice chat over at Sundance. And what struck me as as notable among many other things was that you said you were a listener to this podcast, which I find extraordinary for all kinds of different reasons. But perhaps the most critical one is that a lot of the stuff we talk about on this podcast is industry talk, banter yeah. about the business. So I'm yeah. curious about just to kind of kick things off, what interests you about kind of the business of making movies given that, you know, a lot of actors would think like that's somebody else's problem. Yeah, I think uh, no matter how much, you, first off, this is great. You did the intro and I was like, oh my goodness, I'm actually on the show. This is real. <laughs> I'm hearing your voices. Um, We're here. I, you know, I think, uh, I think no matter how much we try to uh, make it about business, ultimately um, we have opinions and those opinions are connected to our perspective on art and on you know what's being put into the world world and so when I listen to you guys it's you can always hear the opinion you know and um I respect the opinion you know a critic or um a garbage man or a barista they have an opinion on art uh and there's a via a veil I think of oh this is business chat yeah but business chat is heart chat too you know I I, I never try to, to differentiate uh, I think it's quite difficult to I think it's uh maybe perhaps um just protective to say, oh, it's just business. It's not business. This is very personal. You know, the entertainment industry is a very personal um, industry, uh, like it or not. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm curious what got you into acting. Um, uh, you oh, were wow. in high school. Something happened yeah. that sort of threw you into it. What didn't happen in high school? Um, it was a culmination of so many things, I think. And like I was, um, there's a fight. There was, uh, I shoplifted, uh, and I don't mind saying, I, sh I was shoplifting my family's Christmas list from a department store, and I got I got busted. In the middle of being busted, you know, they, they let you out in the world a little bit, and uh, I got to a fight the same week, and so it was like a double whammy, and um, and they and they put me on pause for a little bit, and uh, when I come when I came off of pause, um, there was this lady named Miss uh, L J Miss Lejeune. And she was teaching this theater arts class. And um, I got put in that theater arts class. And I can let you say the rest is history. The trouble was minimized. The practice of the art just grew and grew and grew and grew and grew. You know, all that energy, all the creativity, you know, I was using for my uh, <laughs> uh, juvenile criminal lifestyle <laughs> uh, was being uh, funneled into uh, words and language. Uh, I literally have you guys stacked up, the computer stacked up on uh, on a play and two books of poetry, you know. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this stuff has been everything, you know, and Miss LJ really got me, you know, and she really allowed me to um, apply all that stuff. And she handed me off to the next and handed me off to the next and handed me off to the next uh, teacher, you know, which then became institution, uh, which then became director, you know. Um, yeah, I, I've noticed that pattern throughout my career. So how uh, did you end up at Yale Drama School? Wow. Um, so Yale was this is my is my second official drama school. We were talking earlier before we got online about New York City. I love New York City. I've trained probably at every institution or every little nook and cranny uh, in New York City, from the Bill Esper Studio to TK Studios, or else uh, Stella Adler Studio. I, you know, I've just, I've, I've been everywhere, you know, a, a proper journeyman. And um, I wasn't curious. And so one night I was in my third year, third year? Yeah, I was in my third year at the North Carolina School of the Arts, which is, you know, also a pretty, pretty strong program. And um, I kind of hit a gear, which happens when you, you know, you know work. You know, we all, we all understand that feeling. Like you, you write, maybe you write an essay or you, you write a review, you go, man, this is really, really good. Yeah. <laughs> and you go, how did I do that? You know, what happened there? Uh, but I had that exchange with a classmate of mine. And um, we were doing the play, Last Days of Jews is Scary. It's probably 2 o'clock at night or in the morning. And um, we hit a gear. The instrument hit a gear. And I was like, holy smokes. And he saw it. And I saw it. I was witnessing it. And I was like, this is crazy. And um, I thought, how did I do that? How do we do that? And... Um, we really talked about it outside and um, it was a culmination of all the work we had done up until that point, you know, and the scene and all this stuff. And I thought, oh, it, it's like the it's like the second dose of the bug where I went, 
okay, I've been doing this, but now I want to do it like this and only like this. Mm -hmm. And and that night uh, I Googled in my, in my dormitory, uh, what is the uh, best drama school for grownups? And the Yale School of Drama showed up. I said, okay, I'm that doing, was easy. I'm doing <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm doing that now. I'm doing that now. Uh, and then traditionally I, I auditioned. Um, I auditioned. I came in at a very crazy time at uh, YSD. You know, the guy who was monitoring my audition uh, is a fabulous, phenomenal actor named Yahya Abdul Montaigne II. Sure. Who's, yeah, who's very much, you know, um, present in the game. You know, Lupita Nyong'o's Oscar win was the first thing I watched as a group, as an entire school. We watched that, and that was my first year at the at the program. Wow, Listen, it must have been fascinating yeah, at that point. Yeah. I mean, I think about yeah. that, you know, bringing us into the Oscar context, because obviously, as you know, like that's consumes a huge part of our time is, is sort of looking at that stuff and looking at the film festival world and how it launches movies into these wider yeah. conversations. But like, that's usually where we enter into the lifespan of actors and directors. So I was thinking about how like, I saw you first in Last Black Man in San Francisco at Sundance in 2019. And mm. You know, I was thinking back on it. I remember when I, when I was saw uh, magazine dreams this year, and I was like, "Well, last black man, it must have been like ten years ago or something like that." And then I look back, I was like, "Actually, it's like just a few. It was like four years." So yeah. I don't know how the hell I, I I mean, maybe I'm just getting older or something. But I also think that you know, a lot can happen in a short period of time. And I wonder, you know, in your case, now suddenly you're in like these big franchise movies and stuff. But you hosted SNL back in 2021. And I remember even then thinking like, oh, so like other people know who this guy is now. I'm not just like those of us who, you know, live in that little bubble of, you know, indie films that break out of Sundance. I mean, when yeah. did you start noticing that? That like, oh, yeah, I'm actually I'm getting beyond that kind of inner wor world of like small movies and being a Yale drama school guy and, and actually somebody who, who, you know, strangers can recognize. Oh, wow. I mean, I don't know. I really don't know. I mean. I I have, I just have a, I have a really great team, you know, and um, I really believe in leadership, you know. And I I introduced you to uh, I brought them to you when we were at the party. I said, "You want yeah. this to happen? Here they come." You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Uh, I I said to say that um, I just worry about the art, you know, and I I I really drill and focus on the folks who I put around me, you know, so I don't have to worry about the other stuff. But I, I man, when they called me about SNL, my mind was blown. Like literally, I, very much like you, I thought, me, you know, like there there's. In my mind, there's nine guys ahead of me. You know what I mean? I try to be patient. You know, there's nine guys ahead of me. Chiefly guys I went to school with, <laughs> you know. Um, they go, oh, oh, okay, cool. You know, um, I, I also, I also practice, to be honest, I also try not to think about it. I also, like, practice um, abstaining from certain parts of our industry, you know. Um, I think certain things can, certain things can kind of get your wires crossed. You know, don't believe the hype, you know. Never believe the hype. Ever, you know what I mean? Yeah, Even no, I, I get it, I yeah, get it. But yeah, yeah. I, but I mean, there must have been a moment where somebody like saw you in a coffee shop or something, and you were like, "Whoa, right?" Yeah, I mean, okay, yeah. So look, I mean, I get, I guess it just happened when I was, I drove from New York to uh, Park City, and I think I was wow. in the middle. Of, I, I think I was in Montana. No, I wasn't in Montana. That's the wrong way. I was in uh, 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 Iowa. Oh, wow. Okay. At, a, at a gas station with my two dogs. I get, I got in the gas station. I mean, this is one of those towns, you know. Um, I get on the gas station and I come in, and the guy says to me, "Oh, and I'm buying a, I'm buying a bag of potato chips." And he goes, "You sure you can eat that, Mister Men's Health?" And I go, "Holy smokes!" You know, <laughs> okay, like, okay, all right, okay. You, people are paying attention, you know. You you rec you recognize my face, you know. I got my clothes on, obviously. Uh, so I go, okay, cool. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> things things are changing. You know, things are changing. Yeah, yeah. But the movie I, mean, I always they, thought you broke out in was was also uh, Spike Lee's *De Five Bloods*. Yes, that was an amazing <clears throat> ensemble of incredible actors, all yeah. of them, and yeah. you still popped out. You held your own oh, wow. against wow. those people. How did you get that part? It's all connected. Um, it, we were. I had just come back from Park City. I was. I just got. I, I went back to New York. I was there for two weeks, and I got a phone call. Uh, saying that Spike Lee wanted to meet, and I was like, "How is that possible?" And it was from the, it was from the, you know, I guess the vibration of, you know, our small little world of uh, Sundance, of, of actually a friend, you know, one of those guys in my mind that are, you know, ahead of me, um, 
just age and 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 training wise, um, couldn't do the role. And they was like, "You're up." And I said, uh, "All right, I'm up." Where are we going? I jumped on my bicycle in Harlem and drove it to uh, 40 Acres. Um, parked my bike, walked in. We had a chat. Then he said to me, uh, all right, you know Delroy Lindo? I said, yeah, I know Delroy Lindo. He said, he's going to play your dad. And I looked at him like, what? <laughs> what? Said, yeah, Lindo, he's going to play your dad. And I went, oh, wow. Uh, so it just happened. You know what I mean? I mean, it's I believe, the constant gardener. You know, I, I just, again, you know, it's not. It's not a gimmick. You know, I just kind of just do my work, do my work, do my work, do my work. And you look up and all of a sudden there's a Spike Lee tree that's asking you to be in a movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you go, OK, cool. Um, but that came from the fact that um, uh, Kim Coleman uh, had casted me in um, Lovecraft Country. Mm. Right. Uh, and so they're close. And so she may have whispered something to him. I said, OK, now we got a calling card. There's a there's a. There's a bit of a tension happening on this movie, and, and I know he's an integral part of it. Referring Casting to directors Lesley, can Marisa, be really Klitschko. key. Yeah. Yeah, they're everything. They're everything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's Steve. fascinating too, because I mean, in some on some level, it's like there's also this element of okay, so you're you're planting these trees, but you're also choosing which ones you don't want to plant, right? Like, yeah, I, I'd that's love right. asking actors like. I know you're saying yes to this and that, but what are you saying no to? And right. of course you've been promoting stuff like crazy the last few weeks. And you made some headlines saying, you know, you walked out of your first Marvel meeting, which yeah. is a fun <laughs> kind of drama to kind of play up. And then of course, yeah. Sarah Finn, their casting director wins you back to play King <laughs> because she makes the case or whatever. But yeah. I guess like, you know, that mentality is more interesting to me than just that your first Marvel meeting didn't interest you. Like you must be getting other kinds of roles that might seem off base to you? Like what other meetings are you walking out of beyond like the big one? Right. It It's process, man. There's so many, I can, I can, it's odd for me. I can tell how a script is sent. You know what I mean? If there's a, if it's watermarked and, you know, wrong, you know, all of a sudden my spy senses are growing off, you know, I go, Oh, this something's not right here. Something's not right in the DNA of this piece. You know, I work a lot with first time directors. Something I really admire about them is that they're, they're open. You know, there's a there's a there's a there's an openness and a real raw ambition to him. So when I look at a script, if it doesn't have that, right, I kind of say, well, I'm not, I can't, re I'm not a gun for hire. You know what I mean? Like, I'm here to win the war. You know, this is not just a battle. This is like, it, if this is the last movie, it's the last movie. You know, and you want to you want to die on the field. Not to be too morbid about it, but uh, yeah, if it doesn't, if it if it's not moving my generation forward, you know what I mean? If it's not my generation's version or if it's not new, you know, if it's not if it doesn't have a high level of difficulty, you know, socially or emotionally uh, or physically, you know, with these last couple of mm. pictures, um, I kind of say it's, it's just not for me. You know, um, I just don't want to quit, you know, and I'm I'm quick to my mother tell you before this acting thing, I, was, I walked off a band. I walked away from sports, you know, it, you, Acting has to continue to feed me, you know, and I know it will, but it's based off the level of difficulty, you know, and the contribution. Because um, if you get bored with it, that's when you start making mistakes. You've picked very well and very consistently so far. Mm, okay. But you often play characters who are conflicted and troubled, and they seem to mm. be on the verge of, of exploding. And yet you draw us in so that we empathize. Even with a mm. world destroyer like Kang. Yeah, yeah, we could. We could we how, how, what was the audition process like for that role? And why did you decide that that was worth doing? How did he challenge uh, you? Kang, <laughs> Kang is in many ways like um, uh, the actor's dream and also the actor's nightmare, you know? Um, the audition process, again, you know, it, it goes back to that constant gardening, you know? Um, Essentially scouted. I guess that's that's the first time I've used that phrase, but yeah, I was scouted. You know, like that's exactly what happened. You know, they watched, they they knew that Kang was coming and there was no actor. You know, Foggy uh, said, you know, they do it three phases at a time. So Kang was coming with or without me, um, but they were looking for the Kang guy, <laughs> you know. Um, it's very sweet, you know, we talk about process and how I know if it's something for me or not. You know, the process of how they uh, reached out to me was very, was very um, for, an for a, 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 a corporation like Marvel and Disney, it was quite human. It was a letter, 
and it referenced things that I had done in my career that they had seen, you know, and not even they, specific people had, had seen. Um, and they and based off these things, they thought I could potentially um, fulfill the requirements for this role. That already got my attention. You know, I'm a Southern boy. If you're polite, you know, I'm already, I'm a, you already have my attention. I say, okay, I'm listening. Um, but then it gets to the nuts and bolts of Kang, right? And what he represents to me as an actor, he, he's he's Mount Everest, you know, Mount Everest on top of Mount Kilimanjaro, you know, atop of Mount Ogun, right, in Bali. Like, like it's it's essentially infinite, right? And so how do you curate infinity? We talked about the level of difficulty. That seems quite difficult. Then we could talk about, we talked about our new, the New York moment, you know, Eric saying, you'll get back to New York. First time I was in New York, I was 19, 20, 20, no, 23 years old. I was staying there by myself and I saw my first Broadway play for the first time. And I spent all my vacation money on that Broadway play. And that Broadway play also was a eureka moment that changed my life. And I was both happy and extremely sad after I walked out because I thought, man, that my life just changed. And two, my life just changed after 23 years and Broadway's been here my entire life. Well, that's, that breaks my heart. How can I participate, right, and give stories at that level, at that frequency, right, that can reach people? Yeah, an IMAX ticket is 40 bucks, hate to tell you, right? But it's not the $240, right? So so, so that was also an opportunity, uh, Ms. Ann, to, to do that, right? Because I knew the MCU is it's the largest scale. Hey, I love it. Whatever opinion you have about it, when that camera's up, you're telling the story. And with Kang, I have an opportunity to tell a story for millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of people. Well, like that, probably not that many million, but millions of people, you know. A lot. Um, yeah, a lot, you know. And that really got my attention. The responsibility of that really got my attention, you know, for my generation, um, for the culture, um, for our industry. Yeah, it's it's I I, I love that finally the business savvy is coming out. You know, I'm like I know there's <laughs> a bit of that in there. We're talking about IMAX costs and and all that sort of thing and inflation. You know, it all kind of I'm aware. Into one big I'm picture. aware. <laughs> but, I do have uh, a I do have a production company. Yeah, yes, so I'm, and we're going to definitely talk about that. <laughs> I mean, I I wanted to kind of a, 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 a attach to this whole Marvel thing though. It's like when you are positioned as a celebrity, all this other stuff starts coming in. I mean, I read an article about you where you went on a date with somebody to a museum, you know, and I was like, this is, this is fun. You know, I get, I yeah. get it. I get why you're doing yeah. these things, yeah. but there's, you know, the internet memes that come out, the photo shoots, all this kind of stuff is performative. Yeah. You know, there was a lot of talk about your Ebony shoot, for example. Like yeah. suddenly you're you're like this image in the public sphere that you have to navigate in a different kind of way that may or may not have to do with, you know, everything that you're talking about that got you into this game. So yeah. how are you approaching that side of this? Obviously, it's it's been magnified a lot just with the, with the last few weeks. Yeah, I mean... It's a responsibility, you know. I'm not one to shy away from it. Um, you know, an image, an image. I mean, we make movies, right? We know what an image can do, right? And let alone someone writes an article about it. So yeah, I take it. I take it quite serious, but I also don't. I'm not losing any sleep over it. And at the same time, I understand that. Again, the internet's for the proletariat. Everybody can get. Everyone has access to it, right? Which means it can touch anybody at any time. So you, you know, we, look, we talk about the Ebony cover. That started the bill for ruckus, you know? And then there's a bit of controversy. That's fine. It's, that's what art does, right? And I'm an artist, you know? I'm there to start the conversation, you know, to, to present discourse. I'm sure there's going to be a, um, I'm sure there's a threshold, you know? Uh, but humbly, we just, I just got here, you know what I mean? And the threshold is... I don't think I'm anywhere close to it, you know. And also, I'm looking forward to. I'm about to disappear in three months, in 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 six weeks. I'm about to go shoot a movie. Everyone knows I'm out. Peace. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm gone. I'm gone. You know what I mean? So I I can do six. I it's like reps. I can do six more weeks. You know what I mean? I I, I actively keep myself away from you know the social media and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, but yet there's also power. There's also power in the image. I represent a, a few things. You know, y you can't you. You got to take the crickets with the straights. You know what I mean? Like, this is what happens when you do this at this level. And this is the, this is the, um, this is the consequence of it. Sometimes they're good and you like the good. And sometimes they're bad and you don't like those. And sometimes, sometimes you're just ambivalent about it. 
You know, sometimes they're in the middle, and that just comes with it. But I also believe that I'm in, I'm in the service industry. That I think is a, is a part. Of, I just had a, a pre interview for uh, some late night show, and they asked me, um, "What about um, you know, do you ever feel like you need to take a break?" And I go, "Everybody in my family is blue collar. You know, we work nine to five. I, I don't know any job in the world where you do f- nobody. Nobody I know works four months out of the year and then hangs out for the rest of it. You know what I mean? I, that just sounds that sounds crazy to me. You know." Um, so it's a job. I'm rambling now, but you feel what I'm saying, Eric? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So you get you... to stir shit up and then vanish and make another movie, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. In a nutshell. Yeah. So, so when did you start to lean into, you know, building up your musculature? You know, you did you always work out? What was there a specific role that you had to that forced you to really step it up? And now, what's your relationship to to staying uh, fit? Uh, suit the word to the action, and the action to the word. You know. Um, I had two, I had three characters kind of come up where the physicality was going to be slightly different from mine, you know. Um, when I did Devotion, when I did um, this film, The Heart of They Fall, it's the given circumstances. You know what I mean? That's what we talk about as actors. What are the given circumstances? I'll say this there's some vanity in the actor, you know, that doesn't want to really succumb and really give in to certain parts of it. And sometimes that's the physicality, you know, because sometimes they're asking you to be unattractive quote unquote, or sometimes they're asking you to, you know, shave your head and you're obsessed with your hair, et cetera. Um, but the roles I had, they just required it. And somehow these guys all came together, you know, in a film called Devotion, I was playing a, a pilot. In order to play a pilot, you've got to be quite slim to get in that plane. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? My shoulders are what they are. And I'm, I'm, I was taller than a lot of the other guys. So I was cramped. So I had to cut my weight down. But then you look at pictures of the character I was playing, Jesse Brown. And I was like, oh, yeah, one, he's four years younger than me. Men, do, Merrick, you know this. Men do what they do. We don't, we, you can't hold weight until you get to a certain age. You know what I mean? Um, and so I'm cutting weight, you know, to fit, you know, literally to fit. Conversely, now I'm playing this bodybuilder. Now I'm playing this boxer, you know. Uh, um, now you're playing, you know, a formidable Avengers level threat. These are the given circumstances, you know. You've got to do that. I grew up playing football, basketball. Mm-hmm. You know, genetically, I'm the runt in my family, even now, you know, 200 pounds. I'm still the smallest male in my family. So that's what happened. You know, I said, I got to play this role, you know, and you only get one shot. You only get one shot at it. You know, I'm playing I'm playing a Marvel villain. I'm playing the quote unquote, the big bad. Oh, no, I'm reading these comic books and I'm going to feel I remember telling them, take the muscles out the suit. I remember saying to them, take the muscles out the suit. I will fill it out. I, I guarantee it. I Way guarantee it. You know what I mean? I will fill it out. You know, there's Better no fake in the like front. The... This has always been an issue going back to the nipples on George Clooney's bat suit. You remember that? It was yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. You don't need yeah. those details. You don't need that. We don't need that. Uh, and 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 now I maintain it just, um, yeah, we got in it too. I ran to the gym here. You know, I showered, threw my cap on, came to meet you guys. Um, you know, health is a lifestyle. Stanislavski's troop um, traditionally did yoga. You know, Gotowski is all about, you know, breath and movement. Alexander technique. The body's an integral part of the acting process, you know. And I just have to eat a bit more than usual. You know, <laughs> that's the maintenance. Yeah, we saw magazine dreams. We saw what you went through. It's funny because like man, <laughs> it looked painful I, to me. It did look it did. But I gotta say, I mean, I rambled about this last year. I trained for the New York City Marathon last year. And mm-hmm. uh, that was a new thing for me. And I thought I was hungry after these long runs. And then I saw what you were consuming on this movie. Yeah. It's like, yeah. wow, that's like a whole other level. But it is always funny how it's like people that when you're an arty person, people don't assume you also have an athletic side. You obviously right. show it in public, but you know, not right. everyone does. Well, so, you're an yo, action star now, too, along with well, everything I, else. Added to the bucket. Yes. Yeah. So, so the magazine dreams actually is is something we should touch on because now it's with Searchlight, and they have this great record of getting movies out there for awards, and we're like two and a half weeks away from the Oscars as we're talking now. So, yeah. I'm curious how much you're so you sort of pay attention to all of that. Um, what you make about any of the nominees you, you've been uh, following this year and, and kind of, you know, I mean, obviously it would be nice to say that Magazine Dreams is, is an Oscar contender. We need to see how the year goes, but, uh, mm-hmm. you know, how any of that, you know, 
weighs on your mind? I had a few things happen this year that I thought, oh, you have my attention. You know, I was asked to join the academy two years ago. I, I really participate. You know, I, I, I really participate. I think that yeah. I think. So you watch yeah. everything. I, I, I watch I, I watch a lot. You know, I watch a lot. You know, if I'm voting on it, I watch it. I think that should be a, some of a requirement. It's, it's, it's crazy. And we've got work to do. I was talking to a few cats, um, you know, just on the circuit, you know, as we travel. Spoiler alert, I am a young black African-American actor. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, I'm quite sensitive to the uh, political climate around, especially around institutions that I'm a part of, be that North Carolina School of the Arts, Yale School of Drama, or um, the Academy. You know, I'm, I'm very aware. Um, a few things that I really, really, really enjoyed from uh, this year were uh, Stephanie, Austin, Paul. Yeah, these these are members of my uh, Barry. These are members of my generation. You're right, right. Go okay. It's a transition that happens when you look up and you realize the the the, the NBA stars are your age. You know, mm. you go wow. You know, <laughs> or the president is your age. You know, we're not quite there yet. I'm not quite there yet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, but you go, okay, wow, okay, we are we are making some movement now. You know, I, this is the first time I saw that. You know, I thought, oh, it's cool. It's wicked. I mean, I love seeing Angela Bassett there, you know, Yaley, um, and also, like, one of the founding mothers of, of my my route, my journey. You know, her name should be, you know, etched on the trailhead, you know. Absolutely. Um, I'm happy about that. Um, and then, of course, there are things we need to work on. You well, know, how did you feel about the Andrea Riseborough nomination over Daniel Deadfiler and Viola Davis? Did, did that was, bother you? It's twofold, isn't it? Because um, one, I go, I'm always, I'm always for the ruckus. I'm always, you know, if you cause some problems, I'm like, hey, okay, get it how you live. Um, I go, <laughs> I'm looking at my publicist and my pub, my public, my PR bill, and I'm like, girl. Do I need to pay this? You sure? I know people too. Um, that's a joke, but only slightly. Um, <laughs> but the uh, the absence of um, you know you know the queens, you know Viola Davis, uh, Daniel Detweiler, um, I think it speaks more to a syst syst uh, systemic issue, you know, within the company. If you're if you're able to be uh, persuaded, you know, I I, I wish I wish this I wish uh, there's room for everybody, you know, there's room for everybody. And there's a time and a place, you know, very much to what you and I were talking about, what we were all talking about, but Eric, when you brought up the um, the other side of the celebrity, right? That it's not always about the work. There's the other side of it. There's the responsibility of it, right? The Academy has responsibility in addition to the promotion of films. They have responsibility to the institution, you know? To that point, I think it's a huge uh, step that they've made acknowledging Angela Bassett, you know, within a, you know, quote unquote, an MCU film, you know, yeah. that's a, that's a, huge, that's a, that's a huge growth, right? Like the, the industry is changing and shifting. And if you don't change and shift, you perish, you know, you will perish. And so good on us, good on you, uh, Academy for, for, for doing that. I'm proud. I'm very proud of that. Um, there's a lot of work to be done. And as an Academy member, I can get, I can, I can do more than I can say now, you know? Well, I hope you think carefully about how you rank your best picture ballot, because we talk about that constantly on this. Podcast. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's game. right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> did we put it, put, do we put number one at number one or do we? Yeah. Uh, I'm not asking for do. advice. I hope. I, I hate <laughs> the I'm not idea that people advice. are gaming it. I really do. <laughs> um, so, there's another side to all this stuff, which is, um, you know, there's there's the awards attention, there's the festivals, there's the big movies that resonate for audience in a certain way. I want to talk about reviews for a second, because that's also a key part of the ecosystem. It's how people notice you. It's how these movies kind of have a, a kind of public life in a way that I think is really important, obviously, being a, a critic myself for a long time, but also because it's something that doesn't always get the attention it deserves. And just to play the numbers game with you for a second here. So we're looking at meta, the meta score for your performances, because it's just a, a, the way in one way in which we can see how, how these reviews uh, stack up and your highest yeah. is last black man at an 83. Your lowest is Ant-Man at a 48. But it's I have deep. to tell you, I have to tell you, and I'm not trying to make you uncomfortable. I have to tell you, still even doing the well at the reviews, box office, <laughs> killing it at the boxes. But even the bad reviews really make pains to single out how good you are. 
Yes. So I'm curious, like how much you look at that stuff, how it affects you. I mean, there, there, I'm sure it was a point in time where you were like, oh, wow, people are writing about me and I don't know who they are. But now it's like, it's a whole other level. So, so are you still reading all this stuff or, or how does it play a role in kind of the way you see yourself? Well, I, I can jump to the end. It doesn't change how I see myself, period. <laughs> uh, and then uh, the middle of the sandwich is, um, it's all data. You know, it's all data. I think about, you know, I'm a, I'm a performance within a story, you know, and I'm always, one thing I will say, you know, to my team, you know, as we're leaving the premiere, if everyone's reading reviews, you know, I just keep saying, well, how, how's the movie doing? How's the movie doing? How's the movie doing? I try to clean my plate and take care of my, my, my part. And, and the response is, you're straight. You're good. They like you, you know, and then they tell me about the movie, you know, and then sometimes the movie is also, you know, on the level. Sometimes the movie is, you know, but then you realize it's people, you know, it goes back to what we were saying before, why I listen to these, uh, why I listen to you guys. Right? I go, they have an opinion and you always have an opinion. I mean, when it comes to like, a, yeah, you always have an opinion, you know, it depends on how people, I'm no fool. I got 33 years of living, real living, you know, where I go. I know these are people writing it, right? These aren't my Yale professors. These are not my NCSA drama teachers, you know? These are people who have kids and have a perspective and probably have a religious upbringing or or the lack thereof or, you know, live in this town or live in this town or want to be seen in this way or don't like being seen in this way, you know? So I go, okay, cool. So I look at the aggregate and I go, okay, cool. 47 great but how you compare that what does that what does that 47 mean when you also got this x x x x x amount of box office it was 48 just it? to be clear yeah, <laughs> don't yeah. lowball yourself take the point take the yeah, point yeah yeah wait, 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 yeah what was you know what what do these things mean you know and in my in my opinion it's information depending on who i'm talking to you know uh but i am in the know i, I won't i won't i won't i won't play myself you know if you are a critic on the level i probably know you <laughs> you know what I mean, and and, and understand and understand your politics. That, that's also what it comes down to. August Wilson says, uh, "Art does not have to be political because art is inherently political." And if and if theater and art is the sort of democracy, which I believe, critics are political writers. You know what I mean? You are you are a political writer. I am a actor, a politician, a citizen. These, all these things are true. All these things are true. You know, I, I, I find it quite fascinating. That said, I'm a human being like anybody else. Someone say something crazy about the movie, I go, oh, man, we've got Creed coming out, right? My team's telling me about tracking and this and that. And I say, wait, yeah, 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 but don't forget, we still got Ant-Man going, you know? And, you know, we can't, we can't, we can't, we can't forget about this kid because you got this kid coming, you mm -hmm. know? And, and and that's speaking to my heart, you know, and to my, my feelings about, because I invested in these things. That's the other part, you know, like guys, like, the artists and the filmmakers that made these movies invested years sometimes into the two hours and 15 minutes you see. I'm not saying be nice. I'm just saying understand it. it, it it's a real transaction that's happened when you put right. pen to paper. You know, It was a real pleasure to see you and Michael B. Jordan up against each other in those incredible oh. scenes. That diner scene in Creed 3. Beautiful oh. stuff. Beautiful stuff. Thank you very much. What did so acting opposite him as a director? Did yeah. it give you any ideas? I know you started a production company, as you mentioned before. Why? Why? What are you up to? Ooh, um, I, I actually spoke to Mike about this um, uh, at the All Star Game. Just at random, I just said to him, uh, "So break it down for me, bro. You did. You went from actor to producer to director." He said, "Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. Cool." cool. I think that's what I think that's I think that's the route I'm going to. I think active, you know, I don't really have a well, as I say that it changes. Like there's a project I'm producing that I go, it's just there. You know, it's just like I could direct this. I think I could direct this. I just have a bit of a stigma around it because I went to school with directors. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like I never want to step in anybody's lane. You know, I know I'm an actor. You know what I mean? This this little part right here, this this little element right here, yeah, this I can. I can play here, you know, but to step into someone else's, you know, maybe maybe that's a limitating factor that I'm putting on myself, but or maybe it's respect, you know. Well, you've um, got a lot coming your way right now. The world is your oyster. You have a lot of choices, you know. Thank you. There's so, a lot thank going you, on. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you said actor, producer, director is like an interesting trajectory. So where does poet fit into there? Because I know you you have like a book of poetry. Um, yeah. Do you know anything by heart? Do you want to give us a sampling or something? 
A sampling of my poetry? Oh, no. Uh, no, I couldn't do that. Because... Can we read it somewhere? Well, uh, yeah, there's two poems. Uh, there's two poems at the New Republic uh, that were printed and also hmm. are, are online. You can just Google those. Uh, you have to use my middle name. I mean, mine, you can just type it in, Jonathan Majors Poetry, maybe, maybe it work. But uh, I published under Jonathan Michael Majors, which is my government. Hmm. Um, yeah, there's two poems there. One is called uh, On an Aeroplane. Which I think we, you all would really relate to, as it's you know about that um, that liminal space when you're on the plane and you're you're in the middle of nowhere, and your 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 whole tribe and community is this group of people on the plane, and the, it's just about amusing, a, a few musings that happen while I'm on the plane. You understand, you know, why a hero became a villain, what a dog did bite, you know. Oh, the two lines from it. Uh, and there's another poem that's quite, um, it's a, a domestic poem, I think. Uh, but the poet, uh, I almost called you E. We're getting comfortable now. Uh, <laughs> the, cool. All three uh, members of my household are E's. We're the triple E household. So, so we all call each other E. Wicked. Well, E, uh, the poetry has, has kind of always been around, you know, since I was a, a kid, you know, uh, but in earnest probably since about, you know, 17. But it happens in isolation. You know, around 17 is when things really got uh, went haywire. And when you're expelled from school so many times or suspended from school so many times or in isolation so many times, you, you begin to write or draw or, or whatever. And I, I began to write. Yeah. I love that. So on top of that, just get back into the movie side of things. When you were, you know, in those formative years watching things, were there – were there artists on the film side who really got you excited, who are maybe still working today, like directors that you would really kill to work for now that you actually could tell your agents, like, hey, get me a meeting with these three people or whatever? Yeah, well, I don't work for anybody, uh, but I would like to work with many of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, there's actors, and, and that dream just keeps coming true every time. I, yeah, Me and Willem Dafoe are about to go do a film. You know, I'm like, holy smokes. What's that gonna be like? You know, wow. how am I how am I keep my powder dry there? You know, it's Willem Dafoe, <laughs> the Willem Dafoe, uh, which is very exciting. Always welcoming Spike, you know, to jump back in it together. Um, uh, Spielberg, you know, Spielberg is someone that I've always uh, admired. You know, he's one of the directors that raised me. You know what I mean? Without with uh, us, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, Paul, all the Andersons, Paul Thomas Anderson, Wes Anderson. Uh, Barry Jenkins, you know, I think to be photographed, that's the way it feels to me, to be photographed mm -hmm. by Barry Jenkins would be, you know, incredible. As to not minimize those, I'll, I'll yeah. stop there. Yeah. Good short list. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for doing this. Oh, John. wow. This is so it exciting. It was fun. I hope it was fun for you. I, I, I really got, I feel like I got to know you better. That's the thing yeah. that I'm really happy about. We covered a lot, but it didn't feel like we were covering a lot from where we're sitting. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and, uh, and John, you're, you're welcome back anytime. If you have a big idea you want to share with the, with either us or the industry that might be tuning in. So, uh, you know. I'll hold you to that. I'll hold you guys to that. <laughs> and we made it happen, Eric. We made it happen. And we said we were going to do it and uh, we made it. We made it happen.